We've all been students for a while, some of us longer than others, but my point is, sooner or later, we will be tossed out into the real world and we'll have to use the degree that we have spent so much time and money and effort to obtain. And I thought, what better thing to talk about than how to put yourself in an excellent position to have a great job upon graduation. While I am a dental student still, I wanted to share a couple of things that I have learned recently from reading a book that I thought would be helpful to you and that I am going to try and apply to my life and my future as well. But first... the Crown Council annual event. Well, let's see. There we go. Which is a dental conference and I have been attempting to implement a little bit of the things that I'm going to share with you in this video. A big factor in life and in finding jobs is who you know, not what you know. When I think back on the four jobs I had throughout high school and college, only one of those jobs came because of my own qualification and pursuit of the job. The other ones came because of who I knew, whether it was through family or through a friend of mine. That was just the way it was. And it makes sense that a lot of the jobs available are available internally. They aren't posted on the internet and you probably won't hear about them or know about the opportunity unless you know someone either in the company or who is the one looking to hire. And in the book, Designing Your Life, it's by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans, they talk a little bit about finding jobs and they talk about the most common method that most people use and how they scour the internet for job postings on different websites and they send in a resume or a CV and they keep their fingers crossed, hoping, hoping, and they either hear back a no or they don't hear back anything at all. And trying to find a job this way has an estimated success rate of about 5% which is just terrible and obviously is not the best way to be finding a job, let alone your best scenario job. And like I said, a lot of this is because companies either hire and promote from within or they know someone and they already have the candidate in mind for who they're going to hire. So what do you do? In the book, Bill and Dave talk about conducting what they call life design interviews. And calling it an interview might seem a bit intimidating, but the idea is to identify people who are experts in your field or whose work you find interesting and inspiring, and you reach out to them and try and connect with them for about 30 minutes just so you can learn more about them, their experience, and how they gained their expertise in that field or learning more about the job that they do. Obviously, you want to be conducting these interviews with people who are doing the job that you think you want or that you have identified you want. You also want to learn what they love about their job, what they hate about their job. You also want to learn and understand what their typical day is like so that you get a clear picture of whether or not you feel like that job would be something that you would enjoy doing. Keep in mind that this is not a job interview. The purpose of these conversations are not to ask for a job. They are simply to learn more and gather information. In Designing Your Life, they share the example of a man named Kurt. Kurt had master's degrees from Yale and Stanford, and he was applying for jobs. He submitted 38 job applications and you know how many offers he received from those resumes that he sent in? That's right, none. 
It's crazy to think that you could submit 38 job applications and not receive a single offer. But that was the case. After learning how to conduct these interviews, Kurt went on to conduct 56 interviews. Of those 56 conversations that Kurt had, seven of those resulted in job offers. And only one of those offers was for a job that had been listed online. And that's because when you're having these conversations with people whose work you find interesting or you're passionate about, they can see that passion that you have and it's very easy to want to work with or extend a job offer to a person who is passionate about the work that you're doing. For a lot of us, networking can just seem like a dirty word. We think about people schmoozing and brown nosing, just trying to get things out of someone. But when I think about sitting down with someone who is doing the work that I find fascinating, that's an interaction with another person that I would love to have because I can learn from the experience that they have and if it just so happens that they offer me a job, even better. And even if these conversations or interviews don't result in a job offer or a job opportunity, you make a great connection with a great person who might know someone in the same field of work that can connect you with other people, or you might even establish a really great mentor in that field that you can then rely on in the future. This is a great way for students or young professionals to learn more about specialties in certain fields like the medical or dental field or whatever your career might be. I'm sure you can see an application how this could be beneficial in learning about a more specific niche in your field. I didn't want to make this video too long. I wanted to just give you the basics of these life design interviews. If you want to learn more, I would highly recommend picking up the book Designing Your Life. If you are familiar with Ali Abdal, this book is written by the same people who came up with the Odyssey plan and the book is just full of tons of really great and helpful activities in helping you develop a plan to live a more intentional and purposeful life.